So if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that I enjoy challenging myself to new Linux experiences, or at least to try things on Linux that I don't particularly either enjoy or that are really unpopular for some reason. I like to try those things simply because I do like to understand why some people do like them, especially when something is popular and I don't care for it. I like to be able to use that thing and try to at least make it so I can empathize with those people and understand why they enjoy using the things that they enjoy. Now, I've done this several times over the course of the last year or so, and it has been very enlightening. I, I think that I've learned quite a lot, so I'm going to continue to challenge myself to new and exciting things. So, Currently, I'm obviously on several other challenges, the biggest one being the two-year Linux challenge, where I've challenged myself to use the same distribution for two years as kind of to curb my distro hopping tendencies. And so far, that challenge has been going wonderfully. I found OpenSUSE. I have a sticker to prove it. I don't know why I always have to move the microphone to show my, my, my sticker, but I do have to do that. But anyways, so that challenge has, has been going along really, really well. I enjoy OpenSUSE a lot. So that challenge has not really been a challenge all that much because I've just kind of found a home with OpenSUSE. So I've decided to challenge myself to something that's a little bit more extreme. And this time, I'm going to be using GNOME for six months. Now, if you've watched any of my videos about GNOME in the past, you know that I have a very negative opinion of GNOME. I don't particularly care for GNOME all that much. Now, when I first started using Linux, my opinion was much worse than it is now. I can at least somewhat say that I understand why people do use it, or at least, you know, somewhat say that. So what I've decided to do is to challenge myself for six months to use GNOME, actually live in the ecosystem, because one of the things that I failed to do the last time I used GNOME was I, I just used GNOME that last time, right? I used it for 30 days, and the, one of the things that I failed to do was I didn't live in the ecosystem because GNOME has like 100 or 200 different applications that they have available to you that you can download. They, they have things like a matrix client that you can download. You can download things left, right, and center that are all GTK-based and developed applications that fit really well with the GNOME desktop environment. There's dozens upon dozens of them. And... I didn't really understand that going in, and I want to use some of that stuff to see if it kind of enriches the experience of using GNOME. So that's one of the challenges that I'm going to do this time, is to kind of really entrench myself as much as I can into the GNOME ecosystem. And that includes things like using the file manager on GNOME. I'm going to use Nautilus for the first time probably since I was a budget user back in 2017. Uh, it scares the daylights out of me, to be honest with you, just a little bit, simply because I'm a curse. I'm a Crusader user, and if you know anything about Crusader, you know that that has a ton of options and customizations and all the features that you could ever want. And Nautilus is well, it's Nautilus, so I'm not expecting to be very happy there, but I'm going to do it anyways. We're going to see how that works out. <laughs> we, I may end up going to another a different GTK based file manager, but we'll see about that in the future. So that's the idea behind this challenge. But today, and I know I'm five minutes into the video and I'm just getting to the point of the video, but that's beside the point. What I want to do is talk about some of the things that I've discovered so far that I really do feel like GNOME could do better. And I, I want to be as constructive as possible with these criticisms because some, most of them honestly are pretty minor, to be honest, just to be, to be honest. So that they're, it's not like any show-stopping things that I've come across that I just can't, you know, get my head around. But I feel like if these few things could be done better, I might like get them just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Before we do, though, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. So let's go ahead and take a look at GNOME. Now, this right here is not what my traditional GNOME looks like or what I've been using for the last seven days. As you can see, I've been using it for seven days, but I've disabled all of my extensions for now because what I wanted to talk about first was inconsistency because one of the things that GNOME does really well is that with their own applications, they make them very consistent. They all look the same. They all function the same. They all have the same little bits and pieces that make them function and look very similar. So, for example, the rounded corners, like even here in the GNOME Extension Manager, they all have 
four rounded corners. But if I were to, say, open up Spotify, if I go here to Spotify, uh, that's not Spotify, that's Vivaldi. That This here is Sp Spotify. Let's go and get rid of Vivaldi. You can actually, so if you can see, the top has rounded corners, but the bottom does not. Now, I have been told by people who are more knowledgeable about GNOME than me that the GNOME developers, in their wisdom, have left the idea of rounded corners, the implementation of rounded corners, to the developers of the applications. And I can't even begin to express how bad of an idea that actually is. Leaving anything to individual developers when you want a cohesive experience of your desktop environment it just sounds like a horrible, horrible idea because first off, a lot of projects and applications don't get updated either very often or at all. So anything that is ill-maintained will never see the rounded corners, but also developers of applications and the GNOME dev devs have to know this, they all have to develop for multiple platforms. They have to worry about what distributions their applications worked on, what desktop environments they're going to work on. You know, are they going to work on a window manager? All this stuff, right? They have to worry about all those things because they're going to get bug reports from all these different places and relying on them to make their application look precisely the way your, de your desktop environment is supposed to look not going to be something that works out well for the vast majority of applications. And while I've just shown you Spotify here, you can basically, I mean, that's an Electron application. I'm going to show you Audacity here. So this is Audacity. Obviously, I'm recording in it now, but this has rounded corners at the top, squareness at the bottom. So it's not just Electron applications that have that same problem. I could show you many different ones that have the same thing going on with them. Is that, and this is something that kind of, permeates throughout the entire experience of them where you can see where the GNOME applications, the GTK applications are really polished and work really fine. But when you download an application that doesn't fit so well within the GNOME ecosystem, it doesn't look quite as nice. It doesn't function quite as nice. Now, here's one place where the Plasma guys have done a much better job. Now, we all give, and specifically me, I give the KD Plasma guys a ton of shit about their desktop environment being buggy, being overloaded with the features, all this stuff. We've talked about it ad nauseum on this channel. I love KD. It's fantastic. It has a ton of potential. For people who love the tweak stuff, Plasma is definitely where it's at. But because of the amount of features that they bundled in there, they have a tendency to have, be really buggy. But one of the things that they really do a good job at I mean, a really, really good job at it, is making it so that when you use a application from another platform, specifically from GTK, it actually looks fairly decent within KDE Plasma. It looks like it should belong there. The GNOME guys don't either don't care about that or just have not gone around to it or whatever the situation may be. But when you use a cute application here, it looks like a cute application and not the cute kind, you know, it just doesn't look like it fits. Uh, but even applications that are GTK, but aren't GNOME applications, a lot of times they don't have all of the necessities and the niceties of a GTK developed application from the GNOME guys. Specifically things like rounded corners, buttons all looking the same, stuff like that. Now, within the application, I understand that that's the application developer's problem their responsibility completely understand that but things like rounded corners there's no reason why and if i were to go ahead and turn on my my extensions here let's hopefully i don't ruin the the recording but i now have my extensions enabled now that i have this here if i bring back audacity you can see that i have rounded corners so it is possible for gnome to force rounded corners on all applications they can just do that and that makes the entire experience experience feel more cohesive it feels like there's a full thought behind the desktop environment it makes it even applications that don't really fit in with the gtk aesthetic feel more like it belongs on the gnome desktop and obviously if it can be done through an extension it can be done built into the desktop environment but they haven't done that so that's the first thing that i wanted to talk about the inconsistencies throughout the desktop environment is just kind of something that really stood out to me and forced me to go look for a solution to try to fix that because it really does bug me now obviously this is probably much harder than what i'm making it out to be i'm not a developer so even if i were to to 
have a different thing in focus, you can see that if you look at the at Audacity recording right now, the corners have not rounded, have gone back to being unrounded because it's not in focus. And so obviously, making some forcing rounded corners on all applications does have some pitfalls that don't quite work well, even with the extension. So obviously, it's much more difficult than what I'm making it out to be. So I don't want people to say, well, Matt, you can just assume that something is just click a, a click of a button. That's not the case. I understand. Completely understand that. But it's just looking at something I want it to be the same everywhere as much as possible. And specifically when GNOME has done such a good job with their own applications making it consistent. Making it so other applications that aren't part of that ecosystem fit in better would make the entire experience just a b better overall so that's just something that I, I probably the number one thing that i've noticed is that just that it's not as consistent as i would like it to be so that's the first thing the second thing is let's talk about extensions because i just enabled a ton of extensions to make my gnome look the way that i want it to look so it, it brings the it takes the bar along the bottom or the top and moves it along the bottom has all these applications here pinned and stuff like that so it's it's completely different out of the box and the fact that you can do this with extensions is fantastic i like the idea that out of the box it's just vanilla and you can if you want to find the extensions and make gnome into what you want it to be it's basically like if kde took all of the stuff that makes kde out of kde but bundled all that stuff into a program that you could download and then make it into kde again so you you could basically build kde up you know block by block into what you want it to be with all the features that's what extensions are for GNOME, is that it's kind of adds in the KDE-ness of KDE. It gives you a ton of different options. There's a lot of different extensions that you can just install to do all sorts of wacky things, like add your own application menu that looks kind of neat, right? You can do all sorts of stuff. You can add a menu that has all of your system statistics right here in the bar. All sorts of things that you can add out of the box. And I like that because it allows people to... It's kind of like the GUI method of doing a window manager, if, if you will. So one of the things I like about window managers a lot is that out of the box, they're a blank slate. Most of them don't even have a bar. You know, you have to put all this work and stuff into making it look the way that you want it to work, making it function the way you want it to function. GNOME is kind of the same way, and I like that. The, my problem comes in is that the, that it doesn't feel like a first party experience, right? So in order to get the GNOME Extensions Manager, you have to install Flatpak. Then you have to install the GNOME Extensions Manager. And then you have to download the extensions. And then you have to do all these things a little bit by bit by bit in order to do the things. And that's fine. But if it were me, and it's not me, I understand that these are not my, mis my decisions. But if I were to... Do something the one thing that i would do is i would get rid of the extensions application so there's actually an extensions application if i take right here this is the extensions application all this does here is allow you to enable and disable application uh, extensions that are installed you can't install them from here you if you want to install them you either have to install this application or you have to use the gnome extensions website through a browser plugin which is I mean, just the fact that I say that just is insane. So you can use this website or you can use the GNOME Extensions Manager, which is, I believe, from a third party, but you can't use the included extensions application. What I would do is I would get rid of this application completely. Just stop developing it. Fork this thing or take it from whoever's developing it or have them donate it or whatever you got to do. Use this one. It does the exact same thing. You can manage your extensions that you have installed. You can turn them off. You can turn them on. You can uninstall them. You can control the settings. It does all that stuff here. But it also has a browse tab. So if you wanted to install any of the extensions that are here on this website, you can just do that from this application. And that's awesome. That's the way that it should be. So they should include this application inside of Vanilla GNOME. I really, truly do believe that the, if they if they just included it, they don't have to install any extra app, you know, extensions or any of that stuff. They don't have to. Even if most distros do, in fact, include some extensions enabled, Ubuntu does this. Uh, I think the only one that doesn't do it is Fedora. The Fedora is someone who prides themselves on shipping vanilla, but the vast majority of distros that 
ship out GNOME as their desktop environment do include some extensions and including this application instead of the other one that is much more powerful gives the user the control over their desktop environment that they don't get unless they know about this application. So by including it that you don't have to have them know about it. It's just here. Now I understand that extensions are something that is controversial within the GNOME development community. They break them a lot. It's just kind of the nature of the beast when a new GNOME version comes out, a lot of extensions are broken. And th and if they were to include this application and kind of really truly endorse extensions as a first party thing, then they would have to put a lot more effort into making sure that extensions didn't break because obviously if you're going to update to the next version of GNOME and then all of your all of a sudden your desktop breaks because of an extension, not great, obviously. So I can understand why they're not a first party experience, but I still believe that they should be because it gives the power to the user of the desktop environment. And it does so in a way that doesn't force all of the options like KDE does. KDE just gives you, KDE is the absolutist when it comes to everything options, right? You can do literally everything on KDE right out of the box. You don't have to install extensions or any of that stuff. It just, all the options are there for you to play play with. And obviously that leads to the bugginess that we always talk about when it comes to KDE. We're not, I'm not asking for them to include all the options on GNOME. I'm just not. What I'm instead asking them to do is just include this application so that people know that they have the opportunity to have those options if they want them. Now, you could argue that GNOME is meant for people who are incapable of managing their system in such a way that things don't break on them. Fine. I, I suppose if that's your argument, then GNOME's only ever for new users. If you want to be a more advanced GNOME user, you probably know about this application anyways, and you can go forth and install it yourself. That's an argument. It's fine. And that's where that's kind of where it seems like they've settled on. But for me personally, GNOME would feel like a much more free desktop environment if all they did was include this one application. Not really asking for anything else. That's I think that that would be just make GNOME a much more open feeling type of uh, of desktop environment. As of right now, you know, obviously you have to install this yourself, and it's just one of those things, right? So that's the second thing. The third thing, and and I'm, I know I realize I'm rambling on here, but the settings panel here is something that I want to talk about next. And so specifically, I want to talk about the keyboard shortcuts because this is a little weird. And the reason why I say it's weird is because not all the keyboard shortcuts that you want or might want to edit are here. So by default, super and the numbers or when your window key and the numbers of your keyboard, they will launch the applications. If you have a Dogger panel, the, the, that's what it will do. So super one will launch the first application in the stack. Super two, super three, super four, you get the idea, right? But you can't change that by default. So if you were to change, if you if you just search for super, it'll actually show you all the things that have super. And what I want them to do is have these bold ones here set for super, shift super one, and then I just want super one to be able to switch between workspaces. You can set those, but the ones for launching these applications in the panel remain. You can't take them away. Now, I've been told by some friends that you can use Dconf editor to edit those things. Fine, whatever. Uh, I, I consider that a workaround. I don't really consider that to be something that is first party solution to a problem. Uh, so my problem here is that not all the key bindings are available or surfaced for the user to change. And what bugs me the most about this is that they've done the work, right? All of the work they needed to do is here. So they've created a mechanism for changing keyboard shortcuts for basically everything and then they didn't take it the f they didn't go the entire distance they didn't take everything that you could change and put it in here there are certain things that feel hard coded so a lot of the stuff that has to do with super so for example opening the menu right if i didn't want the menu to open up with just the super key i can't change that Okay, now usually, obviously, this is the GNOME menu, not just Arc menu, but by default, the super key opens up the menu system. 
You can't change it. And the fact that you can't change it bugs me. Now, like I said, GNOME is in the habit of making it so that you can't customize your stuff. So that th there's this whole idea of them knowing what is best for, for the user. And that's fine, right? Out of the box, they've made these choices for the user to do things in a certain way. That's the way GNOME ha has been, has always been, and will continue to always be. That's okay. Usually, though, when they've made a decision, it's either a... It's a binary choice, right? They've taken a either they've taken a feature away or they've given a feature. Those are the things that they've done, right? But in this case, they have the feature and they've implemented the feature, but it feels half-assed because they don't have all of the keyboard shortcuts surfaced for you to edit. Specifically, a lot of the ones surrounding the use of the super key because the super key is very important to them. They want to have it always so that it's available for the menu system and bringing up the search the search mechanism of GNOME, the, the ones that you would normally see if you don't have the extensions enabled, uh, would also be tied to that super key. So that's another thing that just really, really bugs me. And I, I would want them to at least make it so that it's easy for things to be changed because they already like said they already have the mechanism to do so. It just would make sense, I th would think, to put everything that you, you need to change all the key bindings you want right here. It's not going... The argument that it would confuse new users, the argument that it would add too many features is just nonsensical to me because that's what a lot of people say when you, you point out a feature that's missing in GNOME. You, they, they will tell you that if they added all the features that everyone wants, they just basically become KDE Plasma. That's not what I'm asking for here. I'm not asking them to add a feature that doesn't exist. I'm asking them to make a feature that does exist just a little bit better. I think that there's a distinction there. It may be subtle, but it is the truth. This feature already exists. It's just not fully baked yet. That's the way I would put it. So so that's just talking a little bit about the keyboard shortcuts. And honestly, probably not going to bug a lot of people, but it did bug me. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about is something that really... Now, this just might be an OpenSUSE thing. I'm not sure, but I, I've seen some of this on other distributions as well. But when you install GNOME you get more than one session and that's fine. I was expecting more than one session. I was expecting GNOME XORG and GNOME Wayland. But what I wasn't expecting was GNOME Desktop, GNOME XORG Desktop, GNOME Classic Desktop, GNOME Classic XORG Desktop, GNOME Wayland Desktop, and a couple others. So if I were to log out and go into LightDM, which is my current display manager, and I was to go to the session manager dropdown, I would have at least six different options for GNOME. That bugs the shit out of me. I don't, like I said, I don't know if this is an open SUSE problem or if it's a GNOME problem. Now, I have seen on other desk or other distros where they have several different sessions. Usually it's Wayland, Xorg, and Classic. It's time for Classic to go away. I'm just going to put that out there right now. I'm sure someone in the comments is like, well, I use Classic all the time. Um, you're probably about the only one. Uh, very few people, I would say, use Classic. They're going to use the standard Wayland session. And uh, that's fine. And I know that Xorg eventually is going to away, right, going away. I, I am 100% okay with it staying as is, because I'm going to continue to use the Xorg version. I'm using the Xorg version right now. But I can at least understand why Xorg and Wayland are there. But the fact that they have multiple different, you know, entries into your X sessions just bugs me it just clutters things up i don't need that i really really don't need that and it, it like and it makes it harder for moderately skilled linux users to understand which one they're supposed to choose if you're just using gnome for the first time but you know enough to install install it you're gonna have all these sessions which one you're supposed to choose right and, and it just clutters things up and it's messy and i don't like it uh like i said i don't know if that's an open SUSE problem where it's it, it seems to have been especially bad on open SUSE because i haven't seen it this bad on other desktop or other distros but uh, i have noticed it in other places so uh it's just one of those things that really truly bug bugged me and uh and obviously you can't get rid of those things if you want to you can just delete the desktop file and the session will go away but the point remains is that by default, when you install it on a distribution that it wasn't installed by default, you get all these sessions and uh, it's just really messy. So the last thing that I want to talk about is just kind of a little bit of a reiteration of what I was talking about earlier when it comes to extensions. So 
I like the extensions mechanism they have on GNOME. I prefer if it was more of a first class citizen where it felt like it was kind of more baked into the experience of GNOME. Maybe even moving it right into the settings application would work, right? I wish that it was more, it, I wish it was, it felt more like it belonged than it was just something you had to tack on in order to hack your way to making GNOME work for you. But I do like the extensions are available and overall, I like the idea of being able to take something that is vanilla and kind of close down and expanding on it or extending on it, if you will, and adding features that you want. So one of the features that I'm always going to have to have is a system tray. This thing down here, there are certain things that run on my system all the time that I want to see if they run. So if I were to close Discord right now, uh, I close Discord, but it's still down here. Now, obviously, I've been using Linux long enough to know that if I want to kill that thing for sure, if I want to kill it dead, I have to do it in a certain way. But sometimes, I don't remember. I just click the close button, especially when I'm in a desktop environment. And I think that's, that Discord is closed, but uh, it's not. It's still there. Without a system tray, I wouldn't know that. Same thing with Mailspring. Uh, Vorta is always down there, and it never opens up it, you know, as a GUI application in my face, it always just goes automatically to the sys tray. Without a sys tray, I can't know that it's there. So I'm always going to have that. I like, though, that the fact that, yeah, GNOME doesn't have this by default, but I can add it. That's awesome, and that's really cool. Now, obviously, a desktop environment that comes with that by default is fine, right? I enjoy Plasma and all the features that it offers, but the ability for me to kind of piece together the desktop environment that I truly want... That's what extensions offers. And again, if it was a first cast class citizen, GNOME may be like the desktop environment for me uh, because it does g give you the option just to kind of build it yourself. It's like the arch distro of desktop environments. It allows you to build thing, build the thing up directly from vanilla, however you want it. You can make it look however you want. And that's really nice. And I, that's to be honest with you guys, that is my absolute favorite thing about GNOME is the extensions because it just like it, it makes me it makes it feel like I'm going about and extending my desktop environment to how I want it to be. And the issue that I have with it is that it does feel kind of naughty. It feels like they <laughs> it feels like they don't want me to do it because it doesn't feel like it's a baked in part of the experience. If it was, GNOME would be pretty damn good and I wouldn't be complaining about it nearly as much and if you've noticed in this video most of the things that I've talked about are really minute little things inconsistencies adding some key bindings to the key binding thing just so that I can actually customize what the super key does all this stuff is just really minor stuff nothing really all that bad I haven't said anything about theming because I can still theme all that I want. The theming community has found workarounds to make sure that everything works and looks the way that I want it to do. And as long as they can continue to do that, I'm happy with that. I don't need it to be an official feature. Uh, is, in fact, that kind of... I wouldn't want theming to be an official GNOME feature because I don't think that they would do it right. So I prefer the community to do that and it works just fine. So I don't really need to talk about that. All of these just little slight, you know pain points are what's keeping me from truly enjoying my experience and as I go through I'm trying to file away at those just a little bit so they're not as painful you know as noticeable I should say so that's it for this video I know it's been actually quite a long one <laughs> I didn't expect to be rambling on for this long about GNOME but this is a challenge and this is the beginning of the challenge I've been using GNOME for a week so that means I still have five months and three weeks left to go on this challenge I will be making some more GNOME videos in the future now but I'm not going to overload you guys with GNOME content I'm not gonna be making one every week even maybe one a month I'll be making something where, where if I can find a, a topic about GNOME that I need to talk about I'll make a video on it but other than that you guys won't hear me talk about it on the channel too much but at least we'll be talking about it some so that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on GNOME and my challenge, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear from you. You can, If you haven't already, hit that 
like button it would really help the channel it really does help the channel so if you would take the moment to press the thumbs up button i'd really appreciate it you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can also head on over to the store which is at shop.linuxcast.org there you'll find t-shirts and desk mats and hats and hoodies and beanies and pillows and all sorts of stuff all that stuff goes directly to help the channel and it helps me make more linux content so head on over there shop that the linuxcast.org is where you'll find all that so thanks so much for everybody who has gone over there and checked it out and for those of you who will thanks everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very much for your support i truly do appreciate it once again i am behind on adding new supporters to this list so if you've supported me in the last couple weeks and your name isn't on the credits yet i apologize I'm going to get to that in the next couple days, I promise. Um, I've become really lax at doing this because I have a idea for something different that I want to do. I just haven't been able to quite get that to work yet. So that's the reason why it's not uh, been as good as I, I used to be. But I'm getting there. But anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.